that's the right word. I would say. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a moment because of the rain. We're bringing the casket. We're going to lower the casket. So if I can kindly ask you just to focus your attention on this moment. And then we're going to do Kriya in just a moment, but we're trying just, you know, to avoid the rain for Alice. Rabbi Jeffrey Weil from Ezra Abonim, the Niles Township Jewish Congregation, will be officiating. Also, we're going to record, so if I can kindly ask everyone just to keep in line with the camera. Ladies and gentlemen, now that the casket and vault are set, we're going to ask everyone to come back to the inside the canopy. 
And Rabbi Weil will continue and begin really with the sacred ceremony of Kriya, tearing of the ribbon. I'm just going to move everything over to this side. Second, ma'am, I'll, I'll fix it. You want to use something, just I have an umbrella. You know, just careful. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on, I'm going to have the gentleman from the cemetery do it. Okay. Yeah, yeah just do it. Just. Okay. The, um, for those of you who are wearing the ribbons, we call them Korea ribbons. Korea means tearing. And uh, in the Bible, when something calamitous would happen or just sad, our biblical forebears would tear their, their garments um, as a sign of uh, their, in a sense, exposing their wounded, their wounded hearts. And so the, there's a blessing for Korea, which I will recite. And those of you who are wearing the ribbons can recite after me. Um, it acknowledges God as the Dayan Ha'emet, as the judge of truth. So if it's comfortable for you to, to rise uh, for the Korea tearing, for those of you who are wearing ribbons, um, please do so. And please re recite this blessing after me. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Olam, Dayan Ha'emet. Amen. You said, blessed are you, eternal God, Rule of the universe, the judge of truth. And you may be seated. There's certainly room within the tent. Uh, everyone is welcome to come on in. Adonai ma adam bate da ehu ben enosh bate chashvehu adam the hevel dama yamav ketzel over baboki yetzitz bechalaf la erev yimalel v'yavesh. These are the words of the psalmist saying, Adonai, eternal God, what are you that you have regard for us? What are you that you would even be mindful of us? We are all of us just a breath. Our days are a passing shadow. We come and go like grass, which in the morning it shoots up and is renewed, but in the evening of all of our lives it fades and it withers. But God, you cause all of us to return unto dust, saying, Shuhu v'nei adam, return, O mortal ones. Would that we were wise, and would that we understood whither we go from here, for when we die we carry nothing with us, not our glory, not our riches, but God, you say, Shmur Tam Ur Eyashar, mark the wholehearted, behold the upright, those are the ones who shall find peace. Yeah, everyone, if you're welcome to come in nice and close, I'd hate for you to get um, your backs and shoulders to get very wet. Friends, we gather today to Remember one who was Tom Viashar, she was wholehearted and she was upright. She was very smart, she was loving. She was a matriarch of this family, Alice Goodman. Our scriptures, sacred scriptures, they have something to say for us at every time of our lives, the happy occasions and the sad occasions too. And at this occasion, we turn to the 23rd Psalm uh, which you can find in your handout. I'll read just the beginning of it in Hebrew, and then we can read it together in English. Adonai ro'i lo exar, bino desha yarbitseni, al me minuchoti na haleni nafshi yashuvev, yan cheni v'magle tzedek l'ma'an shamo, gam ki elef v'geit salmavet, lo ira ra yata imadi. We read together. 
The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Longfellow said that in every life some rain must fall, and today rain is falling, but it is true that in every life there are the uh, God willing, the happy times, but also the sad times. And the next verses that I'm about to read from Ecclesiastes or Kohelet stand for the idea that everything unfolds um, at the right time in the right place. Sometimes uh, that seems to make sense when someone has a long and productive life, and sometimes it seems not to make sense that things are unfolding in a way that they should. Sometimes you wonder how and why. Um, and yet our tradition pushes us, kind of guides us in a direction to believe that for everything there is a time. For everything there is a season, a time for every experience under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot that which is planted. A time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to grieve and a time to dance. A time to throw stones, a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace, a time when we must refrain from our embraces. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep, a time to discard. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to be silent and a time to speak. And so we now speak, sharing words and memory tribute of Alice Goodman. She was an American Chicago-born. Those words are very close paraphrase of the opening line of Saul Bellow's The Adventures of Augie March, and it is an appropriate way to begin a remembrance of Alice Goodman, for Alice was an American Chicago-born. She led an American life, a life pivoting around community, around family, rich with family, rich with community, a life that stretched across nearly a century a life impacted by the Great Depression early on, a life that witnessed tremendous seismic cultural changes in this country. And hers was also a Chicagoan's life. And while Saul Bellow describes Augie March in the beginning of the book as, uh, as referring to Chicago as that somber city, Alice experienced this city not as one that is somber. It brought her joy. She loved Chicago, she loved its beaches on sunny days, she loved its theater, its zoo, sports teams, taking the L, the train to places, and she loved her homes here. Her storied home in Skokie, right outside Chicago, on Greenleaf, which remains with the family over the course of these decades, which is really amazing, all the way back, decades back to, to her childhood home in Humboldt Park, a neighborhood that truly imprinted on her, and which was always a part of her. She was the daughter of Lillian and George, sister to Sandra and Dolores. George owned a bar, and Lillian also went to work when the depression struck. And so she went to work downtown as a uh, seamstress inspector. With her mom at work, young Alice had to shoulder responsibilities at home and she played a key role in taking care of and raising her sister, Sandra. And I, I wonder if this early weight of responsibility for Alice was influential, if it turned her into the person that she would become. This, she was an exacting person. She was a perfectionist. She was strong. She was determined. She was hardworking. And I believe that even as a child, when you were in a position where you take care of another, you learn the value and really the importance of your every action. 
She went to Thule High School, something which she would say that she shared with Saul Bellow himself. And she became a young woman and she married into a large family, Chicago family, maybe you can call it a clan, the Goodmans. Saul and his brothers were in the amusement business. He owned Bright Service and his brothers had other companies similar in the similar business, same business. They divvied up the territory or territories and they would help each other out. Alice's domain, meanwhile, was 3336 Greenleaf. And in that home, she and Saul raised their sons, Brian, Marshall, and Craig. It was an open home. It was literally an open home. That door was unlocked. And so over the years, over the many years, people, family, friends, neighbors would just walk right in. And Alice would be there and very often creating those meals, perfect meals, including those Sunday brunches. They were not merely perfect in taste, they were perfect in presentation. She had all those plates and those platters, those dishes, each dish for the right, for the right food, for the right occasion, neatly arranged. Alice was a family-focused person, and she did always whatever she could do, whatever was needed for those closest to her, her family, her husband, her sons, the center of her world. She just wanted to fulfill the needs of everyone, and there were needs. There were, there were needs in the family. But besides the pressing needs, how pressing they were at various times, it was also a home of just a whole lot of fun goings on. Like, for instance, the machines downstairs, jukebox, ta pool tables, pinball machines, and so forth. This made 3336 Green Life a very popular spot among uh, the boys and and your friend and their and their and their friends and the family, the family would also head out. They were they loved going to sports. Saul had a had seasons tickets, so they'd go to Comiskey to see the Sox. They would take in Blackhawks games. Alice loved the Bulls. She loved Michael Jordan. And in the summer, they might head out to the beaches. She was a sun lover, and so she'd be there soaking up the sun as the boys were running around with relatives and friends having a good time. Besides the family beyond the home, Alice maintained community involvements as well. She was involved. She was a leader in the sisterhood at Skokie Valley. She raised money for City of Hope. Uh, she bowled also. She was a bowler and she would go bowl at All Star Bowl on church. And being part again of that big Goodman family, that itself was a community experience. It was a whole community. It was like a city. <laughs> they're, they're, they would have to rent out halls just for their holiday meals. There could be a hundred plus people there. But as I said, there were needs, there were challenges too. The tragic loss of Brian, who was really a charismatic kid. He was a leader in school. And it was a terrible, terrible shock. I could just, you know, imagine the jolt of searing pain for the entire family. And yet, as, as pained as Alice, mother of Brian, must have felt all that pain, she was so strong and she forged ahead. She was dynamic. And so she, as the boys were, had gotten older, she went to work. She worked for the Stenographic Corporation. She ran the order room, a very good position for someone as ordered as she was and organized as she was, and for someone as good with numbers as she was as well. And also, despite the pain, there was also joy. There was joy of, of gaining in the family too, as Marshall and Vicki married, and Alice treated Vicki not like a daughter-in-law, but like a daughter, and she, guided her in cooking in the kitchen in that way as well. Vicki learned by, by watching, by observing, Alice teaching her to have a feel for the right ingredients in order to make those delicious meals. As we were discussing this yesterday, I was getting so hungry thinking about it. I believe I got this right, brisket, 
chicken soup, meatballs as well, sweet and sour meatballs, no less. So it's it was a beautiful relationship. Just as Alice's cooking was spot on, so was her penmanship. Even on her social security card, it's beautiful. She had a sense of just like, you know, how things ought to look and be arranged. That, inclu that included how she, uh, how she wrote. And so ever dynamic, she trained herself in calligraphy and she became the calligrapher for family and friends for invitations and so forth. I should say the volunteer calligrapher, despite the voluminous amounts of invitations that were before her. Um, she, she did it. She did it with uh, commitment, devotion, hard work and love. And she was a night owl, or she could at times be a night owl, so at times you might wake up at three in the morning and see her working on those invitations, or perhaps ironing in the middle of the night. She was just a, 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 a busy, active person. The family grew, it continued to grow with the arrival of her beloved grandsons, Robert and Stephen, who brought just extreme joy to their grandmother, Marshall, and Vicky and Rob and Stephen lived out of town, and yet you were here so frequently with family. And Alice, when you came, was so eager and excited to share with her grandsons the gems of this of her city. Yes, she did all the regular grandmotherly wonders in the kitchen, for instance. And yes, she would turn a, she turned a blind eye when her her, her grandson Robert ate ninety percent of chocolate mints. Was it? Um, which Vicky just learned about yesterday, by the way. But her real j joy was to share with these beloved grandsons her beloved city, taking them on the L to the zoo, to Wimpy's for burgers, to the theater, to Marshall Fields, the tea room, and so forth. And what a delight it must, what a delight it must have been for Alice to show her grandsons, whom she loved so dearly, um, the delights of her beloved city. And then they'd be back at the house or they'd be there on Sunday mornings for those big brunches and many members of the family as well as friends and neighbors would show up striding right through that doorway, sitting around that table, talking, eating, a very Jewish kind of scene. And Robert said that he would look around as a kid, look around the table and say, who are these people? <laughs> well, they were your people, of course. And there are your grandmother's people and your dad's and mom's people, Skokie people, Chicago people. Alice brought additional Jewish flavor to your lives by um, exemplifying tradition and the memory of her lighting sh Shabbat candles uh, from a long, long time ago has remained with you. And may all those wonderful memories be shared with the next generation as the family has, embra has continued to grow and embraced Kimberly and the great-grandchildren, Rachel, who is sad over her, the loss of her great-grandmother, as are the twins, Haley and Hannah, who are moving in right across the street from the, the homestead, in a, in a sense. Over the years, it must be said, one constant in Alice's life and in that home was Craig, his memory for blessing. He was an extraordinarily devoted son to his mother, and they were extremely extremely close. In Torah now, we're reading in Torah through the, the stories in Genesis. And we read, you know, we often think of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but we really ought to think of Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, the matriarchs, the imahot, and not just the avot, the patriarchs, because these women were essential and imperative for the story of Genesis and for Torah and for the Jewish people to move forward. They were strong, they were independent, they were brilliant, and they were like Alice Goodman, a true matriarch of her people. She was devoted to all of you, devoted to her family, she was devoted to her people, to the Jewish people and its traditions. She was part of the fabric of her community and her city, and she was also deeply, deeply committed to your needs, devoted to your needs, and full of love for this family, for all of you. May her memory be for blessing. Amen. Marshall.
Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you all for uh, being here uh, today. And happy Veterans Day, uh, by the way. Um, you know, we came out here yesterday um, and visited. Um, and I remember, I think it was like eight years old, very young. And my dad had just bought these plots. And we looked at the plots and we counted one, two, three, four. And I was like, wait a minute, four? There's one, my dad, my mom, Brian, myself, Craig. That's five, but there's four plots. And my dad explained, he said, you know, you're going to have a family of your own. And they're here. And you'll be with them. But it's hard to see them all there. I've written a lot, but I won't get through it. And if my mom was here, she'd say, enough already, go eat. <laughs> so I, I do want to thank you uh, to come out on a day like this. And by the way, Kim, this is about as good as it gets in the winter in Chicago. So um, she's moving here from Florida, and she's experiencing Chicago. Uh, weather uh, for the first time so um, you know um, I'm not the only one crying today the heavens are crying but from the bottom of my heart I thank you she lived a wonderful life it was the most incredible mother so I can't thank you Vedahi Reshit, Chirat Tachlit, Achaim Kamasahim, Kahalichat Smicha, Mishalav Vishalav. Birth is a beginning, death a destination, life a journey, a going, a growing from stage to stage. And now the the long, almost ninety-eight year good and loving journey of Alice Goodman has come to its conclusion and so oh God into your care we entrust the spirit of Alice Goodman for you keep faith with your children in death as you do in life as well sustain all of us oh God that we may meet with serenity the mysteries that lie ahead for us knowing that when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death you oh God will be with us as a loving friend in whom we put our trust. You are the light of our lives, our hope in eternity. If it is comfortable for you to do so, please rise for the memorial prayer, El Malay Rachamim, which will be followed by Mourner's Kaddish. El Malay Rachamim Shochein bam romim, hametzayim nechan nechona tachat kanfei hashkina. Im kedoshim v'tehorim, kezoha harakia masirim. Et nishmat hayikara shalanu shalcha leolamam. Baal harachamim yastirecha b'seter kenafav leolamim. Very tor bitor hakhaim et nishmata Adonai hu nakhalata kitan nuach bishalom al mishgaba benomahar Amen Compassionate God eternal spirit of the universe grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence with the holy and the pure who shine like the light of the heavens to Alice Goodman who has entered eternity O God of mercy, let her find refuge in your eternal presence 
and within the shadow of your wings. Let her soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. God is her inheritance. May she rest in peace, and we say, Amen. After Mourner's Kaddish, uh, we'll engage in the custom of uh, putting three measurefuls of earth into the grave. Um, it's considered a final mitzvah for the deceased, and yet it's not really the final mitzvah. Um, the final mitzvah or the final mitzvot will continue to be the doing of good deeds in her memory and acting in a fashion towards each other as, as, she, as she conducted herself through life and as she loved you, may you continue to show love and kindness to each other. Mourner's Kaddish. Do you have a copy? Do you have it? Does everyone need it? Yitkadal the Yitkadash Shemei Rabab the Alma Divra Kirute the Amlich Mafute the Chaychon of Yomechon of Chay de Hol Beit Israel the Agala of Isman Kariv Imru Amen Yehe Shemei Raba Mivarach the Alam Lame Amaya Yit Barach the Yishtabach the Yit Paar the Yit Romam the Yit Nase be it Hadar, be it Ale, be it Halal, Shemei de Kudisha, Barifu, the Ela, mean called Birchata, the Shirata, Tushbichata, the Nechamata, the Amiran, be Ama, Imru, Amen. Yehe Shlam Ara, the mean Shemayam, the Chaim, Alenu, the Alkol, Yisrael, the Imru, Amen. O Se Shalom, Bimromav, who ya a Se Shalom, Alenu, the Alkol, Yisrael, the Imru Amen. Now I'd ask all of you who are here to support the mourning family to repeat these words after me, speaking speaking to them. May God console you, God console you. With, all who mourn with all who mourn in Zion and Jerusalem. Hamakom Yenechem Etchem, Betosha Avletzion Virushalayim. Now go forth in peace unto life. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, memorial contributions to the American Cancer Society would be appreciated. That information is on the service folder. Keeping in mind it's very wet outside, we brought dry earth for you. So you can either use our dry earth or you can use a shovel. And then for those of you who need to be escorted to your cars with umbrellas, just let us know and we'll do it. Please be careful about the sides of the tent. If you notice, uh, at any given moment, the water will go through. So we ask the family to come first to place earth into the grave. Five minutes from Orlando, 25 minutes. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to ask the gentleman from the cemetery to close the grave. If you wish to witness that, please remain. Otherwise, you may return to your cars. 